Let us begin with a word of prayer. O Lord God of hosts, Heavenly Father, we come before you today with a very serious subject, and I pray, Lord, that you would please help me to speak things that are in line with your word. Uh, we have a very serious problem in our world right now, and uh, we need to fight. I have no idea when you'd be calling us home, Lord, but uh, until then, your word says we're supposed to hinder the system of Antichrist, Lord. We have to fight against this tyrannical um, Satanism that the elites are bringing against us. And uh, Lord, I do pray that you would please help those who view this video to search the scriptures to see if these things are so and that uh, they would forget the cares of this world and the, the, the deceitfulness of riches and, and join the fight, join this great battle that we all must be part of before these wicked Satanists uh, get too much more power. They've already taken so much. It's time to fight, Lord. It's time to take the gloves off, as the old saying goes. Now, Lord, I do pray that you would uh, help me to speak boldly and, and open my mouth in a way that I magnify not myself, but your word as the ultimate source of power on this earth. And I ask it all in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A call to fight. I am not going to make any apology for what I say in this study. Um, I thought of this thing a, a long time ago, months ago. I had seven sermons, a call to. Uh, this year, 2020, has seen more tyranny, uh, ridiculous tyranny, over a stupid virus that uh, is not even that dangerous. And, and they've just been overreacting on this whole thing and the propaganda and the whole deal. Uh, destroying the economy, destroying people's lives. Um, it's, it has been a very frustrating year for me as a preacher. And I've known that the church buildings were false. I've been preaching against them for years, and I've had them make fun of me and the whole deal. But now my words have come true, and I don't take any joy in that. I really don't. I don't like to see churches being told that you can't have people sitting next to each other. I don't like to see these church buildings, even Catholic ones and whatever else, I, even my worst, most you know, enemy type of church buildings, I don't like them being told by secular politicians that you can't even sing in a choir anymore. It's wrong. It is wicked. It is tyranny. And the time has come to fight. Early on, all lockdowns and face masking and social distancing and all this other nonsense. And now they're going to make it worse. And I'm seeing it again. They're bringing the tyranny back. They didn't back off. Well, the time has come that we need a call to fight. We must fight these people. Because if we don't, they're just going to go to the next step. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. So the time has come for a call to fight. Let's turn in the Bible to Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10 in the Old Testament. I have here written the A Call to Studies. I did this in the spring of this year. First, we had a call to righteousness. Secondly, a call to sobriety. Third, a call to holiness. Four, a call to faithfulness. Five, a call to judgment. Six, a call to obedience. And finally, number seven, a call to fight. That's where we are. If you haven't seen the other studies, go watch those because it's important. It does go in a list of, a, a list of importance, I should say, a, a, you know, going through what's most important. Don't just say, okay, I'm ready to fight, and you have a whole lot of sin and other issues, and you don't obey the Lord, and you, and you don't really want His judgment. and what it, You need to watch the other studies. Okay, I'll link them down below in the description box. But let's look at a, a passage of Scripture here. Joshua chapter 10, verse 15 through 27 in the King James Bible. Don't waste your time with the new versions. They're pathetic and useless and, you know, ultimately trace back to the Vatican. So you don't want those. Joshua chapter 10, verse 15. And Joshua, re Joshua returned and all Israel with him unto the camp to Gilgal. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Makkedah. And it was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hid in a cave at Makkedah. And Joshua said, Roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave, and set men by it for to keep them. And stay ye not, but pursue after your enemies, and smite the hindmost of them. Suffer them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God hath delivered them into your hand. 
And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter, till they were consumed, that the rest which remained of them entered into fenced cities. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Makeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then said Joshua, Open the mouth of the cave, and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And they did so, and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jer Jermoth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass, when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel, and said unto the captains of the men of war, which went with him, Come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near, and put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed, be strong and of a good courage, for thus the Lord Thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. And afterward Joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees, and they were hanging upon the trees until the evening. And it came to pass at the time of the going down of the sun that Joshua commanded, and they took them down off the trees and cast them into the cave wherein they had been hid and laid great stones in the cave's mouth, which remain until this very day. You say, what a terrible, bloody, violent story. Yeah, that's history. Uh, the history of this world has been one of war and fighting. Oh, well, we can, we can make a certain society and certain rules and whatever, and we can eliminate war, we can bring in peace. Every single time man has ever said, we're going to bring, bring peace after this special war that just happened or whatever else, it's not very long, and we're back to war again. It's back to fighting again. That is reality. People come along and they say, oh, we should be peaceful, and we should whatever else and things, and the Bible certainly does teach peace. Absolutely, I'm not denying that. But the reality of it is, peace only lasts for a little while and we're back to war again. Why? Because of sin. Because of wickedness. Tyranny comes, there's no choice but war. When there's tyranny present in a world, in a, world, in a country, wherever, the only option is war. Tyranny and peace means servitude. Hey, there's a tyrannical government, let's be at peace. Then you become a, a feudal serf. And they step all over you and, and destroy your rights and things. Tell you that you can't sing in a choir. You can't go and sit next to people. You can't hug people. You can't even show your smile. You can't even show your face. Oh, let's just let's just be peaceful. Let's just kind of, we'll just get through this to, together. And so, No, we won't. No, we won't. The tyrants, when they take this kind of power, they will only make it worse in the future. Any time in history... And whenever this has happened, the tyranny has come. If you don't stand up and fight, the tyrants get worse. They become more emboldened. We have to fight. The Old Testament is a bloody, horrible time a lot of times. And you look there and it's, and it's just war and fighting, going and killing these people and whatever else. But I'll tell you what, the people learned to fear the nation of Israel when they were walking with God, when they were doing right. And they weren't even, you know, members of the body of Christ. They weren't even connected spiritually to God. They had their system of Old Testament sacrifice and everything else. They were under a faith and works setup for salvation. Bible-believing Christians today, you get saved. You're part of God. You're part of His body. What more power do we have? What more power should we have? And yet we don't have it, do we? Because, well, let's just be peaceful. Let's just... We, I, I don't want to lose my job, and I, you know, I, I have a nice little church family that I get together with, and, and I just, I, I don't want to offend anybody. And I mean, the time, the time to fight has been long ago, but the time that we're in right now should be pushing you into a situation where you're saying, okay, hey, it's time to take the gloves off. It's time to fight hard. First Samuel chapter seventeen. You know, I need to make a point here. Um, you are here today watching this video. I am here today preaching this because my ancestors and your ancestors fought and won a war at some point in time in the past. If it wasn't so, you would have been one of the ones that died. You would have been the weak people that had been slaughtered. The people there in the village that are pacifist and whatever else in the Raiders come in, the other tribe comes in to take over, and they get slaughtered. Our ancestors were fighters. My ancestors, the Denklingers, uh, they have a coat of arms. 
They were knights. They fought. They killed. It's just the way it is. And I'll tell you what, you say, well, well but, but as a Christian, we, um, you wouldn't have the freedom that you have today if it wasn't for Christian ancestors fighting and killing enemy soldiers. We need to fight. 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning in verse 23, the story of David and Goliath. There's a lot of things to learn from this story. And as he talked with them, David comes down to the battlefield. He's there bringing a message to his brothers. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion of the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Kind of like a lot of men are doing right now with the television. Television is the Goliath of today. The propaganda arm of the global elites coming out and saying, you need to this and you need to that. And all these rules, these tyrannical rules. And righteous men are hiding and whimpering and cowering. And Okay, I'll, I'll go against the scriptures that tell me, if any provide not for his own, especially for they of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. I'm supposed to work for a living, but the media and the elected official tells me I can't go to my job, so I'll listen to Goliath rather than listen to the Lord. How sad. Verse 25, And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? Who are these people in the media, that they should defy the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? Who are they? Elected officials, a bunch of women politicians, and they're telling men you can't go to work. You have to stay home because you might get sick from a little virus. What a reward there will be for the righteous men that stand up and say, No, I'm not going along with that. You want me to wear a face mask? No, I'm not wearing a face mask. It's wrong. It goes against my beliefs as a Christian. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, He takes care of my health. I'm not going to wear some stupid mask. It doesn't even make sense. It's not even a deadly disease. It's not even a deadly virus. Oh, and vaccination? I don't think so. What rewards will be there for those men, those of us that stand up and say, no, we're not going along with this tyranny anymore. Verse 27, And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab his eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I love that. Why'd you come in here? What are you saying? Deadlinger doesn't even have a real church. He's out in the middle of nowhere. And whatever. Why don't you guys out there with your little church buildings, why don't you have the guts to stand up and speak against this stuff? Where were you when it first came out? Where were you speaking up against this whole thing, this scam and the tyranny and, oh, the government locked down our church and we can't go to church and, and fellowship? Come on, big boy. Huh? Are you Baptists out there? Are you big mouth Baptists? that are submitting and bowing down and kissing the feet of the government goons? I know thy pride, same thing put on me, and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Are we Bible believers? Or just Bible-believing pretenders. And he turned from him toward another, and spake after the same manner, and the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. You're not a, a trained soldier. You're, who, who are you? You'd, are you an ordained preacher, Denlinger? 
Where's your church building at? You can't fight against this evil, this tyranny. Hey, you out there, you don't even go to a church. You don't even regularly attend a church. And you're going to fight this evil? Who are you? Where's your education level at? Do you have a PhD in religion? Do you have a THD or a THM or any kind of honorary doctorates? You see? And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lamb, and or, excuse me, came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philist Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. Notice he doesn't say, hey, you know, look at me. I can actually, you know, I can bench press a lot of weight. I, I took some karate, you know, and, and things. And so I, I killed a bear and a lion, and I can do it again. What's he say? He hath defied the armies of the living God. The politicians, the media personalities, these wicked devils like Fauci and Redfield, these Jesuit, you know, false scientists that come out and they change their science all the time to fit their agenda. And they're coming out and telling people you can't go out and you can't do this and you can't do that. And all this is such a deadly virus and everything else. They're defying the armies of the living God. They're telling you to do things as a Christian that the Bible forbids. They're defying the armies of the living God. What are you going to do about it? David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand, and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine." Boy, you better have the, the right lawyers if you're going to go after Fauci and if you're going to go after these guys and whatever. You're going to go after these wicked people. You better have the right lawyers and the right, you know, contact your congressman. Make sure you go through the right channels. I haven't to say these. I haven't proved these. But I know what works. I have a powerful weapon that I know what works. I've seen the power of this King James Bible. I know the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know what will work to bring down the Goliath, the tyrannical Goliath that's defying the armies of the living God. I know what works. And we'll be talking about that as we continue. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the men that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked up about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou uh, com comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Who are you? Oh, little Bible-believing Christian. Oh, you, look at you. You don't even have that much money. You have no power. You see our lawyers and, and things and our connections that we have and our powerful elite circles? We're knights of Malta. We're knights of the equestrian order. We're Jesuits. We're... Freemasons, we're all these things. We have all these connections. We're council on foreign relations. We're Bilderbergers. We're Davos. We're, we're all these people. Who are you? And the Philistine, st Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. There's our power, brethren. Come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have the sword of the Spirit, the powerful Word of God. That these devils in the media work so hard to tear this book down through their propaganda movies and their propaganda TV shows, their television will tell you a vision program 
to destroy your faith in this blessed book and to make people mock this book and mock the morality that this book teaches. That's what they're doing. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all the, this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. How's the battle going right now, brethren? I'd say we're losing. The body of Christ is losing the battle right now. Why? Because we're not making it about the Lord. We're just, let's just wait it out and just see how things go. And let's just kind of call, just wear your face mask and just, okay, we have to social distance right now. We're going along with it. The battle needs to be the Lord's. We need to bring the Lord into this thing. And it came to pass when the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Let's run toward him. Let's fight him. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. And the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. Don't tell me that that was David's power. Don't tell me that David had his arm just so strong that he was able to take that sling and sling it like this and that stone sunk into his forehead the Lord directed that stone and the Lord can direct our attacks on the enemy right now so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him but there was no sword in the hand of David therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith and when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel out of Jude, and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Shearim, Shearim even unto Gath and unto Ekron. How glorious. That's a wonderful thing. A lot of people say, oh, that's just, that's horrible. And we, we shouldn't act like that as Christians and things. There's a lot of infiltration in the body of Christ right now. That's another thing that we need to fight. We need to just get away from these people. Just say, you know what? You're lost. You're going to hell. Get out of the way. We have some war. We have some fighting to do. If you're going along with this world and all the satanic system and everything else, not interested. I don't want your help. Kind of like the men of Israel back there different places in the Bible. It's happened a couple different times where they're going to go to battle and it's, hey, the number's too many. Hundreds of thousands of men could go to battle. And the Lord says, no, 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 that's, that's too many. Let's cut it down to the faithful ones. We don't need hundreds of thousands, millions of Christians to stand up against this tyranny and put an end to it. We don't need that many because then they would get the glory. We only need a few. Remember, how many people was it that... Uh, could have been in Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah and the Lord would have spared them? Ten. Ten righteous men and God would have spared a city. Something to think about there. Psalm 7. Turn to Psalm 7. Fighting is a natural part of being saved. I'll say that again. Fighting is a natural part of being saved. You say, well, I, I, I just, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit more of a pacifist. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, well, let me just ask you something there, princess. Um, you get up in the morning. Do you have to fight? Your flesh says, just stay in bed a little longer. Now I need to get up. You get up. What should I have for breakfast? Your flesh says, how about coffee and a donut? Uh, how's that going to help me today? No, I need to actually eat something that's nutritious and good for me so I can actually do a good job with my work or serve the Lord well today and, and whatever. Okay? Flesh starts to play the wrong kind of music up here. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Okay? All right. Uh, forget that rock song from my youth or for that this song or that song is going through my head or shut the radio off. Start singing a hymn. 
even if you want to say, I don't want to fight anybody out there, you're still fighting your flesh all the time. Fighting is a normal part of life when you get saved. Every day. Every day. There's no such thing as, well, I just want a little bit of you know R&R. &R. Okay, I, I was active duty, fighting for the Lord. Now I'm just going to take some time off. I'm just going to go off and just kind of do my thing and, and, and just kind of enjoy my, enjoy my salvation. I hear that one. You know, usually it means it's fine to enjoy your salvation. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, to, to say it's good to be saved and, and the Lord's blessing you. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. But a lot of the people that say enjoy my salvation, it just means that they can sin without any kind of conviction. That's what it means. Uh, they use liberty for an occasion to the flesh. You know, the ones that are saved. Then you have lost people that pretend to be Christians and they just are wicked all the time and say that they're enjoying their salvation. Right. Uh, no, there's fighting. It's fighting. Fighting is a normal part of life. You can't get away from it. So you might as well enjoy it. You might as well get to the point where you say, hey, you know what? Praise the Lord. I want to fight today. Lord, can you put me in a battle today, Lord? What is it that I can fight today, Heavenly Father? Give me something that I can fight against. Why? Because you know what happens at the end of a fight? Victory. Victory. Hey, these cigarettes that I'm having a hard time with, I'd sure like to get victory, Lord. Help me to fight these cigarettes. Hey, that alcohol that I struggle with occasionally, drink a little bit too much, get a little drunk. Hey, Lord, get, help me to get victory. I want to fight this thing. How do I fight it? Hey, that pornography I look at on the internet, I want to fight against this thing. I want to develop a holy hatred for that stuff so that I can have victory over it. Hey, these tyrannical rules that are coming, that are forcing me to do things that are contrary to the Word of God, Lord, help me to fight. How do I fight? How do I get victory over this thing? How do I drive these devils out there on the television and in the politics out there? How do I drive them back under the rocks where they belong? How do I make them have fear in their hearts from, of the body of Christ? Psalm 7, verse 8 through 13. The Lord shall judge the people. But look at this. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. Before you get any power at all, you have to say, okay, Lord, hit me first. Judge me first. Okay, I got myself cleaned up. I got my sins right now confessed. Lord, help me with those sins. Now I'm ready to go out and wage war. Verse 9, O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. Boy, do we need that as a prayer right now. O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. This whole thing is, is just wickedness that we've been put, on, put under here worldwide here in 2020. It's wickedness. O let it come to an end. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. If you don't feel some anger right now at what's been going on, if you don't feel righteous indignation, something's seriously wrong with your walk with the Lord. I can tell you that. Or you're lost. Period. But you're really seriously out of fellowship if you aren't feeling any anger right now about what's going on. God is angry with the wicked every day. Are you part of God? If you're saved, you are. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Do you think God can put an end to this whole nonsense? These wicked governors that are that are going and 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 I mean and it's every country, I realize, but I'm speaking as an American to Americans primarily. Our constitutional rights are being just trampled underfoot right now by the people that are supposedly there to serve us. They have no right to censor free speech. They have no right to stop the freedom exercise of religion and things. They have no right to tell you that you can't go to your job. No right at all. 
You say, what can we do? Can, can we raise up an army? Let's let's get a whole bunch of people together and we'll march on the Capitol and we'll take the governor and take him out and execute him, hang him in a tree. Yeah, good luck at that. How'd that work out in Michigan? Didn't work so good, did it? No, what we need is the one who has the instruments of death prepared. Say, so, okay, Lord, this politician, this media personality, this person that's in the fake science that they call medicine, hey, they aren't repenting. They have no desire for salvation, then God, get them out of the way. And I'm going to pray hard, and I'm going to fast. Effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I'm going to do my part in fighting against these wicked devils. Because I know the one that can stop them. That's what we need to do. Psalm 35. Psalm 35. If you have a pastor that's not fired up, if you're going to some church building or even watching some guy online and he's just... Uh, yeah, stop watching him. Stop going to the church building. These, these disgusting big modern churches with uh, some little effeminate sissy up front wearing skinny jeans and a little hip haircut and whatever else, not even carrying a Bible, not even say turn in your King James Bible. Why do you even go to those places? I know there's lost people that go there. That's primarily who goes or pretty much who goes, you know. I don't understand. I don't get it. Psalm 35, verse 1. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have the Lord fight against these devils? We start slinging the stones and the Lord says, let me speed that up a little bit more. It's not just going to bounce off Goliath's head. It's just going to sink into his head and he's going to fall down to the earth. Instruments of death. Let's make it real. Let's stop these devils dead in their tracks if they have no desire for repentance. If they have no desire for salvation. Let's stop them. We need a call to fight. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am, thou, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. What did the angel of the Lord do back there in the book of Exodus? Pharaoh, this great and mighty powerful king. And the Lord says, let my people go. No, no. Okay. And he goes in and he kills all the firstborn. The angel of the Lord came through there and killed every single firstborn male. And you know who the angel of the Lord is? Do the study. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus would do that? Oh, Jesus, the, the nice guy, the hippie with the little, eh, you know, the little white robe and the blue sash and, and he carries a little lamb. and he, you know. That's not Jesus. That's the Antichrist. Okay. No, Jesus of the Bible is a man of war. And he comes back and he brings war. Slaughters a 200 million man army by himself. Doesn't say, well, I need a whole bunch of help here. Let's get a bunch of the angels together. And what it, oh, Saints are behind him. He says, hey, watch this. 200 million man army wipes him out with his words. And he can't take care of this coronavirus stuff and all the tyranny that's being imposed on us. Verse 6, let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. You want to persecute us politicians? You want to persecute us Hollywood people, media people, Fauci and all you little Jesuits? Okay, we're going to start praying and have the Lord persecute you. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, which, with, which without cause they have digged for my soul, let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself. Into that very destruction let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord, it shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which deliverest the poor from him that is too strong for him, yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. Hey, let's raise up an army. Let's raise up an army and retake America. Make America great again. Uh, how are we going to do that? Do we have the, the, the money and the resources to go against these people that are billionaires? 
the politicians that sit up there just making all this money and everything else, they're so out of touch with the average person. You know? I mean, you just go through stories and stories. It doesn't matter. You know I'm telling you the truth. And you know what they want? They want more money. They want to bankrupt you because they can't, you can't go to work because they said so. So then when you're bankrupted, then they can come in and they can steal your property. They can rob you blind. That's what they want. We need a call to fight, brethren. We need a call to fight. And if you're an atheist watching this, you know what? You need to get on the right side. You have to learn to fight. And the only way to do it is spiritually. You have to understand that there is a God in heaven. Psalm 144. We'll just go along with it. Be a slave. Psalm 144. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, and my deliverer, my shield, and, in, and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. You know, you actually have a very good tool to fight right now. It's that computer that you're on. You can write the comments. I'm not going to say write your congressman and senator or whatever else because that stuff's just a joke. But you know what? We all have the chance to fight right now. Writing letters. Writing things and doing things with your fingers. We have a great opportunity with the internet that we can use it to fight the Lord's calls. I, you know... I mean, hey, I could, I could just walk out. I've done street preaching in the past. I could walk out and I could yell this sermon out there and there'd be a few people driving by that would hear, what, what was he saying? I don't know. And, you know, maybe if I'd gather a few little crowd or something here in the town I'm at or go to some big city and, you know, whatever. But I can say what I'm saying right now and it can go out all over the earth. And people can share it and they can say, hey, watch this and, hey, think about this. And I put it into your mind and I show you the scriptures and you say, hey, they don't, you don't even need to show my video to other people. But you know the scriptures, and now you can go out and say, well, you know, I believe that the Bible teaches this and that and whatever else. We have an opportunity right now to fight the devil's system, fight it hard. And we need to. 1 Corinthians. I mean, I could say, you know, well, if, if we don't start fighting, things are going to get serious. They already are serious. It's already gone way past where it should have gone. And I remember hearing a preacher say years and years ago that uh, some guy said before they take prayer out of the streets, uh, or, or excuse me, prayer out of the schools, that there will be blood running in the streets. And then they came and took prayer out of the schools and there was no bloodshed. You know, I mean, where was the fighting? Well, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to fight, but I, I'd, oh man, I got to get to work. And I have all this debt that I have to pay. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty four through twenty seven. You say, Well, all this stuff's in the Old Testament, Brian. You're you know, we're New Testament Christians, so we're supposed to be, you know, uh, yellow backed uh, spineless cowards that just are doormats for anybody that wants to walk on us, right? First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty four. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for, mast, for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. We'll see it's all about running. It's just athletics. It's just sports type of thing. Keep reading. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Fighting. You, the, the run, the race that you have to run as a Christian, it's not this nice little track, little cross-country thing that you're just jogging along and listening to the birds tweeting in the trees. It's more like you're running along and there's people jumping out with a sword and you have to knock them out of the way. Make sure that they're done and they're not going to be coming back and stabbing you in the back. And here's another guy and he steps out with a gun and you've got to get him and you got to... It's, it's like uh, the, running the gauntlet or something I used to talk about. You know, people hitting you and whatever. Yeah, that's the race. 
That's the race that you're supposed to run. You're going to be attacked by family. You're going to be attacked by co-workers, by government officials. A lot of times you're going to be attacked. I mean, study church history. Study it. It's been rough. It's been very rough. It hasn't been some kind of nice little race that people run and, oh, it's just friendly and whatever else. We've enjoyed freedom, a lot of freedom, because there was a lot of war before that freedom. We have to fight. First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. <clears throat> and verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. You know what your motivation should be as a Christian? No matter how hard I fight, I know what comes at the end. Lay hold on eternal life. Your fighting here on this earth will determine your rewards when you get to heaven. If you don't fight, you don't get rewards. If you fight like crazy, you get lots of rewards. Is there not a cause? What's your cause in life? To advance your career here on this earth? So that you can have an old, or a nice retirement when you get older? You want to get your house paid off and you want to get your vehicles paid off and be able to go vacation in Hawaii and everything? Yeah, how's that going right now? How's it looking for the future? Oh, don't worry, brother. It's just a, it's a temporary blip. The economy's never been better. <laughs> uh, no, it's terrible. You don't need to bail out a good economy. You don't need to send people stimulus checks in a good economy. You don't need to have debt and rent moratoriums because people can't pay their, their, their rent and, and mortgages. You don't need those things if it's the best economy ever. <laughs> things are not looking so good. Maybe you ought to start thinking about fighting. Maybe you ought to start thinking about the war that's been brought. Maybe we ought to start thinking about, hey, how can we get God involved in fighting against these devils? What do I need to do, Lord? Judge me according to my righteousness. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Paul gets to the end of his life and he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Are you a fighter? Or are you afraid? Well, brother, I could lose my job. I could lose my, I could lose my, I could lose my. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, but we're called to fight. Uh, in the New Testament, we're called to fight. And I'll be showing you in another study how to fight. I want to start a war. You say, what'd you say? I said, I want to start a war. We need to start a war. And I'm going to tell you what kind of war. I'll just tell you a while. It's a prayer war. I'm going to show you the scriptures on that in the next study. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. No, be passive. Just be kind of nice and don't, don't ruffle people's... No, be strong. Strong. Verse 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. God chose you to be a soldier. He puts you into his army when you get saved. Do you think of yourself that way? No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm more entangled with the affairs of this life. I have all these things to think about. I have my future to think about. Uh, yes, you certainly do if you're born again. And your future is in heaven. And you get to go there if you die. Okay? It's not like Islam where you've got to fight you know, holy jihad or something like that. And then, you, and then you can go and you can whatever. No, you're going to go to heaven one way or the other. But the point is you're going to get rewards if you fight. And jihad and, and Islam is just a perversion of, you know, Christianity is what it is. It came out after Christianity. Same thing with Roman Catholicism. 
the Roman pagans said, oh, let's take Christian names and things from the Bible and we'll turn it into Christianity. Well, you'll say Roman Catholicism, Roman Catholic Christianity or whatever else. It's a perversion of Bible-believing Christianity. See, how do you know? Very simple. Read the King James Bible. Read any Bible. Show me where there's a pope. Show me where there's sacraments. Show me where there's nuns and monks and, and whatever. They're not there. Islam. Perversion, you know, Bible-believing Christianity gets perverted into Roman Catholicism, gets perverted into Islam. That's what's going on there. So they steal things, they, they counterfeit things that we get as Bible-believing Christians. Oh, you get rewards for fighting. No, that's actually us that get the rewards for fighting for Jesus Christ. Not for Muhammad or whatever other kind of devil-possessed weirdos are out there. Ephesians chapter 6. You know, one of the things that's frustrating to me, and I've mentioned it earlier, but it just, it frustrates me how the Lord, He wants, He will give you strength in weakness. That frustrates me. Um, Lord, let me be in good health. Okay, let, let me just be ultra healthy and, and I will really be able to serve you. I know better. Um, when you're really in good health and you have a lot of money and everything else, you don't think much about the Lord. But you start, you know, kind of having some money problems and you start to have some health problems and all of a sudden you're praying more and, and whatever else and the Lord's saying, well, just put up with it for a while. Lord, I know, but this really hurts. Or, or the, Yeah, I know, but just put up with it. Uh, Lord, hey, I, we can get a million people together. Well, one million man army to fight the forces of the Antichrist. The Lord says, no, it's too many. It's too many. I need a smaller number. Lord does it that way. And you know why he does it? Because then he gets the glory when the victory happens. So why am I saying this? What I'm saying is, don't think that you're going to be able to get a lot of people together. Oh, I've been talking to my friends and my family and they're all waking up to this whole thing and this pandemic, scandemic, scamdemic thing. Um, everybody's waking up and we're going to raise up this great and powerful army and we're going to retake things and we're going to have freedom back again. No, no, the Lord's looking for a small number. Those elite Christians, those elite saved people that say, all right, God, judge me. Go ahead. Tell me where I'm wrong. Help me to fight this thing. And I'm going to do my very best to wage war on these global elites. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Goliath, you've defied the armies of the living God. It's not you insulted me, Goliath. You called me a little name and whatever and stuff. You know, no. David didn't care about the insults that were thrown at him. Hey, you've defied the armies of the living God. Hey, you know what, politicians? Hey, you know what, uh, Jesuits and whatever else, the other little group that are out there that are doing this whole thing? You've defied the armies of the living God. And now we're going to come after you. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the deceit, the trickery of the devil, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. The devil blinds people. These people driving in their cars and they got the little face mask on it, they're blind. You're not saving anybody or helping the cause or anything wearing a face mask in your car by yourself. They're blinded. There's a spiritual problem there. That's why we need to fight spiritually. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. That's exactly who we're fighting against. Some store requires face masks. Some store has the little dots on the floor where you're supposed to stand. And you go in there and you say, who's the manager here? Come here. And he comes and you grab a sword and you go, and you cut his head off. What would that prove? It'd prove nothing. It'd make some nice news for the, the television people. 
the propaganda arm of the global elites and of Satan, it makes some good news for them, but it's not going to stop anything. How do we fight then? Spiritual wickedness in high places. You fight them through prayer. But here's what has to happen first. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. You withstand, you fight against them, that's offensive, and you stand defensive. They say, give up your King James Bible. No, not happening. You need to change and, and not sing you know, these old hymns. Give up your old hymn book. No, not happening. You need to modernize. You need to you know, go to church and have a nice little local fellowship gathering social club. No, not happening. I'm standing for the way that it was done in the Bible times. There are no church buildings in here. There's no going to church in here. There's no Sunday best. There's no 10% tithe. There's, I'm going to stand for the word of God and I'm going to withstand you. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. What do you uh, have your loins girt about with truth? Like a belt on and you have all your gear there around on the belt. You see a police officer, a law enforcement officer, and they have their, uh, their belt on and they have the handcuffs back here and they have the taser over here and they have this thing here and they have, they're all ready to go. That's the way it should be for a Christian. Your loins should be girt about with truth. You don't say, well, there are certain truths that I don't really want to hear about and it's just kind of negative, so I just kind of... No, no, your loins girt about with truth. If it's truth, I need to have it there, ready to go. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, God's righteousness needs to be there. His imputed righteousness. But you have to do your part as well. The Lord shows you that something is right, then you start to conform to that. Your bre breastplate of righteousness. You cover your vitals with the Lord's righteousness. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You need to have it covered with the Lord's righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel doesn't bring peace to lost people that don't want to change their ways. The gospel is there to say, guess what? Here's the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ died for sinners. Well, what, am all, what all do I have to do and give up to get saved? Come to the Lord as a sinner. Come broken. How wonderful is that? And then He will clean up your life after that. And it will bring you peace. I'm here not to come and bring peace to a town. I'm here to bring judgment to the town. But if you want to get saved, you'll have peace. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. We need to have faith as part of our call to fight. We need to have faith that the Lord can turn things back. Don't, don't get down there and pray later on and say, Lord, we really need some help here. I know you're not going to, but Lord, Lord, please turn this wickedness back. I know that it won't happen because they're so powerful. The Illuminati's got us bad, Lord, and I wish you could stop them, but I know you can't. You have no faith. You have no faith. God, we ask you a mighty thing today. Judge us first, and then you judge those wicked people out there. Help us to turn back this tyranny, Lord. Please, God, fight for us. I have faith in thy word. I have faith that you can do these things. Faith. The shield of faith. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The helmet of salvation covers your head keeps your mind, your thoughts right. Hey, what do you think of that good-looking girl? Just what? Sorry, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Hey, what about that music? Sorry, no, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. I want to have my mind clean. Hope of salvation. The helmet, excuse me, the helmet of salvation. Up there it goes. And the Word of God. 
the sword of the spirit right here. This is your offensive weapon. Just go to these mainstream media articles where, or the, the little propaganda thing where they're lying to people. The Lord teaches your fingers to fight. Type in a nice scripture verse. Boom. God is angry with the wicked every day. Boom. Let's start fighting. They brought the fight to us. Let's fight back. We're to withstand them. But look at this. You get all your, your weapons, and your, your not weapons, but your one weapon, the sword of the Spirit, and you get all your armor on and everything else, and you say, I'm ready to fight. And the Lord says, okay, let's go on out. Let's get, let's get a 200,000 man army and let's march on the cities and take the cities. And... Is that how you fight according to this passage? No. How do we fight? Praying always. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. <clears throat> praying always. You get the armor on, why? So that then you can wage the war of prayer. That's how we do it right now in the New Testament. Because you see, physical warfare, it might eventually come to that. I'm not saying it won't. But what I'm saying is, it doesn't start there. It starts with serious, fervent prayer. That's how it has to start. So a couple of things here I'm going to do a little bit differently here towards the end of this study. Uh, I'm going to be showing you some songs, some old hymns from my hymn book here. This is Living Hymns. I can't really show you the spine or the front because it's all worn off because I've used it for so many years. But uh, the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ is, has, uh, we have battle hymns. We have hymns that uh, speak of war and fighting. And that's what we need. So I'm going to show you some, some hymns. I have, I have uh, pictures of these. I just took some pictures with my camera so that you can see what I'm seeing right here. And I'm, going to, I'm actually going to sing some, some hymns here at the end. I don't often do that very much, but I'm going to this time. And uh, you can look these songs up, learn these songs, and sing these songs. Sing unto the Lord. All right? It's just prayer is, is, is very important, very powerful. But combine your prayers, take a break, sing a hymn, read some scripture, remind the Lord what it says in his word, go back to prayer again. We're going to be talking more about that in the next study. But uh, let's, let's go over some of these great hymns right here. This one actually we sang at our wedding. <laughs> my, my wife and I, when we got married, we sang this hymn. I'll put it up on screen here. It's called Onward Christian Soldiers, uh, number 620 in, our, in this hymnal that I've used for many years. And here's how it goes. Onward Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before, Christ the royal master leads against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banners go. Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided, all one body we. One in hope and doctrine, one in charity. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Crowns and thrones may perish, kingdoms rise and wane. But the church of Jesus constant will remain. Gates of hell can never against that church prevail. 
We have Christ's own promise, and that cannot fail. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Onward then, ye people, join our happy throng. Blend with ours your voices in the triumph song. Glory, Lord, and honor unto Christ the King. This through countless ages men and angels sing. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. So that's number 620. Now we'll go to number 646. Let's see if I can get through this. I don't know if my voice will last the whole way through. <clears throat> but these hymns are they're being lost. And it's on purpose. These satanic new churches with their rock music and everything else, they're getting rid of these old hymns. And they say that these old ones here like this, Onward Christian Soldiers specifically, they're too militant, you know. Yeah, because they're satanic buildings. They don't want you to fight the devil. Hymn number 646, Lead On, O King Eternal. Lead on, O King Eternal, the day of march has come. Henceforth in fields of conquest thy tents shall be our home. Through days of preparation thy grace has made us strong. And now, O King Eternal, we lift our battle song. Lead on, O King Eternal, to lands of deepest night. We follow where Thou leadest as heralds of the light. May we to souls immortal Thy word of life convey and open heaven's portal through Christ the truth the way. Lead on, O King Eternal, we follow not with fears. For gladness breaks like morning, where'er thy face appears. Thy cross is lifted o'er us, we journey in its light. The crown awaits the conquest, lead on, O God of might. Boy, I just, oh man, these hymns, I just love them. The crown awaits the conquest. Lead on, O God of might. What do we need that right now? Number 633. <clears throat> Hold the fort. I'll put this up on screen here for you. Ho, oh, my comrades, see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcements now appearing, victory is nigh. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signals still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. See the mighty host advancing, Satan leading on. Mighty men around us falling, courage almost gone. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signals still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. See the glorious banner waving, hear the trumpet blow. In our leader's name we triumph over every foe. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signals still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. 
Fierce and long the battle rages, but our help is near. Onward comes our great commander, cheer, my comrades, cheer. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signals still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace we will. Wow. I mean, look at the, the lyrics in that are just, wow, so amazing. Why do you think America prospered so long? Why do you think the UK prospered so long? Canada, a lot of the other countries that had this and had this. Why do you think? Because they had the mind of soldiers. They would see evil and they'd say, hey, time to fight. You've defied the armies of the living God. How dare you? We still can have it. Number 630. Here in this hymn book, Sound the Battle Cry. And there's a whole lot more I could be singing too. I'm just going to, I picked out five of them here, you know, five being the number of death, so death to the enemy out there. You don't want to get saved, then I pray death comes to you. Out there, the people that are part of this whole tyrannical scam. All right, sound the battle cry. I'll put the words up here for you. Sound the battle cry. See the foe is nigh. Raise the standard high for the Lord. Gird your armor on. Stand firm, everyone. Rest your cause upon his holy word. Rouse then, soldiers, rally round the banner. Ready, steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout aloud, Hosanna. Christ is captain of the mighty throng. Strong to meet the foe, marching on we go, while our cause we know must prevail. Shield and banner bright, gleaming in the light, battling for the right we ne'er can fail. Rouse then, soldiers, rally round the banner. Ready, steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout aloud, Hosanna. Christ is captain of the mighty throng. O thou God of all, hear us when we call. Help us one and all by thy grace. When the battle's done and the victory won, may we wear the crown before thy face. Rouse then, soldiers, rally round the banner. Ready, steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout aloud, Hosanna. Christ is captain of the mighty throng. And one more. Get a hymn book, you know, and learn these old hymns. Look them up online and things. Learn the, learn the harmony and the melody of them and things. And then sing them. You say, well, my voice isn't very good. Well, mine's not the best either, but it doesn't matter. The Lord doesn't care about your, the quality of your voice. He's not looking for a bunch of opera singers. He's looking for you to sing from the heart. That's what he wants. Here's another good one. Another good battle hymn to remind us that we are soldiers fighting a war. Stand up for Jesus. I'll put the words up. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. Forth to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. Ye that are men now serve him against unnumbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, 
Each piece put on with prayer, where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor's song. To him that overcometh a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm breaking up a little bit there at the end. It's about eternity. It's about seeing Jesus Christ and not being ashamed. All of us have things that we've done that we're ashamed of. All of us. We've let this tyranny go too far, brethren. We have. We're forgetting the power that we have in Jesus Christ. We're forgetting that uh, we can stand against this. We can pray. We need to pray. We have to start fighting there is no other option. If we don't fight now, it's just going to get worse and worse. So, there's no pacifism, brethren. We have to start putting on the gospel armor. We have to fight. I pray you take heed to what I've said in this study. I'm going to go on to the next study, and uh, I want to start a prayer war. And I'm very, very serious. Um, the time for entertainment is over. Um, we need to get serious about singing hymns. We need to get serious about fasting and prayer. We need to get serious about this war. It's the you know playtime is over. It's been over for a while. Um, they're coming for us. They want to destroy us. They want to. They seek after our soul. That's the way it is. Um, let courage rise with danger, and strength to strength oppose as the hymn was there that we just sang. Let courage rise with danger. There's danger. Let's encourage each other. And let me just say this in closing. You say, but Brother Brian, it's, it's the rapture. The rapture's coming soon. The, the church age is ending. We have no idea about that. You know one of the reasons why the Lord never puts it in His Word when the rapture's going to happen? The catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble, the correct term. You know why He doesn't tell us? Because he knows we would quit. He knows we would say, oh, well, thank you, Lord. Oh, it's going to be, it's only a month yet until your word says it's going to happen. That's it. We got a month. Oh, all right. We wouldn't fight. Brethren, we're supposed to hinder the Antichrist. We're supposed to fight. And you know what? There's a legacy that we can leave behind as fighters. There is. The biggest number of people that get saved, I believe, from studying the scriptures is going to be in the future. In the time of Jacob's trouble. A great multitude which no man could number shows up in Revelation chapter 7. You mean a lot of people are going to get saved in that time? Why would that be? Because the body of Christ hid and just kind of was quiet and pacifistic? Or because the body of Christ got bold again. I had a brother tell me years ago, he said, I believe the church age is going to come in a full circuit circle. We'll come back to the way it was in the book of Acts. What was it in the book of Acts? Power. Huge amounts of power with a small number of people. You've turned the world upside down, the religious leaders are saying. Can we turn the world upside down again? Yes, we can. If they did it back then, we can do it today. They didn't even have a Bible. Do you realize that? First century Christians, they didn't even have this book. Seeing the scriptures would have been a very difficult thing. Handwritten scrolls. Handwritten letters. We have the word of God in our hands and we can't have the power that they did back then? We can have more power today than they had back then. but only if you're willing to fight. Next study is going to be on how to start the prayer war. Let's get it started. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.